That if a person eats uh, onion which is peeled, or garlic, or egg which is peeled, and it stayed overnight like that without uh, without being made into something, damo uh, berosho. That's what it says, right? That what does that mean? That he's going to be in big danger. He may die from that. God forbid. Why? How, how can he die from such a thing like that? Because there's a ruach ra that rests on it. Ruach ra. That's what it says. The ruach ra is Sorry, something which can kill you, you know? I didn't understand. You mean peeled if you live overnight? Yeah, yeah, overnight, yeah. yeah. Peeled onion? Right. Cut up, you know, that's really, that's really gut sleeping, gut sleeping. Oh. Yeah, that's it. So it says in the Gemara like this, uh, Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. So the truth is that this Gemara is very scary, you know? If you look at it, you may think, oh my God, you know, if I eat this, I'm going to die, God forbid. So the truth is, you know, it comes Tosfot. There are two places Tosfot talks about this. And they say Tosfot, also in the name of Rabbi Nutan as well, that today this Ruach Ra doesn't exist anymore. So we don't have to be really so careful about it anymore. And uh, there are certain things, by the way, which change over time. You know, there are certain types of Ruach Ra that change over time. For instance, you know, the same thing also applies to washing hands. Right? As we know, that we wash our hands in the morning, uh, when we sleep, and because, that's also because of Ruach Ra, that's one of the reasons why. But the Ruach Ra that we have today, they say the Chazal, you know, the Poskim, it's not the same as it was before. Because if you, before it was very, very dangerous, this Ruach Ra. If you didn't wash your hands in the morning, you know, and you put your hand in your mouth, or in your ears, or whatever, in your nose, you could have, Chas uh, died from that. Can you imagine today? Nobody, we don't see nobody dying from that. I mean... But it's still, there is still some Ruach Ra left. That's what they say, some, some poskim. So therefore, they say that uh, you should be careful anyway to wash your hands, right? Don't say, oh, there's nothing left. There is something left there. And also, there's also other reasons why... Uh, we'll do it later. Have a seat. There's also other reasons why um, uh, we wash our hands. Because it's a Briyach Hadasha also. That's what the poskim say. Rashba says this. Rosh. What does that mean, Briyach Hadasha? When you wake up in the morning, you're like a new creation. You know, it's like you, you were created from, you got your soul back, right? Uh, from from Shemaim, they gave it back to you. New creation, you need Natilat Yadayim. There's also other reasons why we do Natilat Yadayim in the morning. So, but the Ruach Ra, right, uh, is not as strong as it used to be also with washing the hands as well. And that's why Manan, Rabbi Shalom, he says, because of this reason, that the Ruach Ra is not so strong, that if a person goes uh, in the morning, right, he washes his hands, you know, the, the minhag used to be with the really religious people, you know, super religious people, right? That they used to have their water right in front of their bed, you know, and uh, it was covered. And this way, you know, when they would wake up, the water would be right there for them, so they can wash their hands. Maran, Rabbi Shalom, he says, you don't need to do this anymore, because the Ruach Ra is not so strong. Why? Because it says in the Kadosh, it says in the Kadosh, that a person goes Arba Amot without washing his hands, Chayav mita, that's what it says in Zohar Kadosh. Can you imagine? He's liable to death. Why? Because Ruach Ra is on him and he's walking around. Dangerous, right? Chayav mita. That's what it says. But today, Maran says, because of the Tosfot also, this Tosfot as we mentioned, Tosfot says that Ruach Ra doesn't exist anymore so strong like it was before. So therefore, right today, it doesn't exist this strength of Ruach Ra that we had before. So therefore, Maran, the way he says to do it, is when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is go to the bathroom, you know, make your whatever you have to do over there, right? And uh, whatever you do there, you do, and then you, you go to the ba- you go to the kitchen. Hopefully, you go to the kitchen, right? You're not washing the bathroom. Hopefully, go to the kitchen and wash over there 
and they do netilat yadayim. So you might tell me, ah, wait a second, but you know, I want to be a big, big rabbi. Yeah, well, Manan was a big rabbi. That's the way he used to do it also. He used to do it like that. You know I mean, he didn't have the water in front of his bed. What he did was he woke up, he went to the bathroom, and then he went uh, to, the, to the kitchen and washed his hands. Right? By the way, in Israel, they don't have to go to the kitchen because they have like a special sink for that, you know, in the religious neighborhoods. Every apartment that you get over there has a special sink for Netilat Yadayim. It's right in the hallway. So you don't have to go to the kitchen. You don't have to go that far. But anyway, the point is, right, that Maran himself was also not so concerned about this, right? Hayav mitav, arba amot. He wasn't so concerned about it. So what the, you may ask, right, what's the reason why Maran first went to the bathroom and then he washed his hands? Uh, what's the reason why he did it this way? Why not do it, uh, you know, the, the, the better way, preferred way, right? Whatever you want to call it, right? The truth is, it's not the preferred way. But the reason why he didn't want to do it that way is because he didn't want to make the bracha until at the time when he has to use the bathroom. You know, it's not, uh, not kavod. You know what I mean? You're like, you know, you're, you're like, you know, your bladder is full of urine. Right? You want to get a make brachot like that? You know, it's not kavod to make bracha like that. This is the reason why he first went to the bathroom. Right? And then he came uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the wash station and uh, he washed his hands, made the tilat This is the way he did it. This is the way I do it, by the way. And uh, a lot of us come with him, I'm sure, are also doing it this way. A lot of people are doing it this way today. They're not so medakdek. You know, there are some people who still do it the old way. But according to Maran, you don't need to do it this way anymore. Not necessary. Because of what we saw in Tosfot. Right? Tosfot says that Ruach Ra today is not what it used to be. You know what I mean? That's the thing. There is another way to tell it. Oh. Uh, because <clears throat> you're not allowed to touch anything. And even in your organs, it says in your eyes. Right, and, right. So right away, get up, wash your hands. Do oh. that like that. And afterwards, go to the bathroom. Right. And then wash again. Wash right, but here's the thing, you know, that um, when you do it this way, there's a flaw also in this. I'll tell you what the flaw is. The flaw is that when you wash your hands twice, the question is, which one are you going to make the bracha? The first time or the second time? It's not the issue. The issue is there is an issue. I'll tell you why. I understand, but there is why an issue. Is the the you know why? Because I'll tell you what the issue is. The issue is like this: if you make the bracha on the first nefilat yadayim that you do, then you're you're making it with a full bladder, you know, which is not kavod. You don't do the bracha. You know? oh. you do bracha after so then, right? If you make it on the second one, there's also a problem over there. The problem is that according to some poskim, when you do nefilat yadayim, you have to do you have to make the bracha right away. So you cannot wait. If you wait, the bracha al So therefore, in order to avoid this problem, this is the reason why Maran didn't do it this way. You know, because he didn't want to get into a question of bracha l'batala, you know, which is one of the Ten Commandments, right? According to Riff and Rambam, Lotisa, Shem Hashem et Shav, right? The Shav is talking about bracha l'batala, according to these poskim. So this is the reason why he didn't do it that way. But anyway, right, uh, getting back to our discussion, right, which was more so, real about, one about something. I want to ask you, yes. Ruach ra, yes. It's still Ruach ra. If it's strong or less strong, it's Ruach ra. Right. Us, right, but in those days the ruach wa, ra, you know how strong it was, it would kill you. It was a death. You know, says, death. He says wherever yeah. he is not washing the hands, yeah, he's touching his eyes. Spiritually, he's damaging his vision. Right, but the truth is, right, that you have to be careful about that today. But it's not, it's not the same already. kind of danger that it was before. That's, that's okay, what we're saying. You're talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual. spiritual. Yeah, of course, seguri. This is not spirit physical. It's a, it's a spiritual danger, of course. But nevertheless, right, in those days, people used to die from this kind of thing. Okay, so that's that's what we're saying, right? But now, sense. getting back to our, our discussion, which is talking about really something else, our, one of our friends over here asked regarding the issue of you know the peeled the onion, the peeled the fr- uh, garlic, and the peeled uh, be- the egg, right? Which is all the same thing, according to Rabbi Shimon Yochai in the Gemara, as we mentioned. So there, as we said, the Tosfot says today it doesn't exist anymore. This thing. So also comes the Hagauta Hagauta Mordechi also writes this. You know that this ruach doesn't exist anymore. Also the Maharshal says this. Right, who's the Maharshal, by the way? Rabbi Shlomo Luria. Do you know who he was, Rabbi Shlomo Luria? He was the cousin of the Ramah. He lived in the same time as the Ramah, right? About 500 years ago. He was his cousin, and they both uh, had this name, Luria. You know, this was their name. This was the family name that they had. Even though his name was Israelish, but from his, the other side, it was Luria. So Luria also, right? Who else was Luria? The Arizal, right? So this was all one family. Can you imagine? Very holy people. Arizal was Luria. And also Maharshal was Luria. Big family, big holy family. So anyway, right, so, by the way, they say that Rabbi Shlomo Luria, the Maharshal, he had Gilu Eliyahu. Eliyahu used to come, Eliyahu and Rabbi used to come to, and teach him Torah. Can you imagine? He was a big man. Adam Gadol. You know? So he also says, the Maharshal, that this Ruach Ra doesn't exist anymore. 
That, therefore, he said the custom is the mean is in our times that we're not medactic about this anymore. You know. So what does that mean? If a person cut up, you know, some kind of a onion or a garlic or whatever it was, as we said, and he left it, he left it out, out, or he left it in the fridge, he can still use it. You know, bediavad, he can use it. Lechachila, better not to do it this way, right? As the Maran says, Ravadi Shalom, he says in Yebi Omer, Chelek Yud, over there, uh, he says over there that the best way to do it is like this, you know, to mix it with something, you know, put some oil on it or some, mix it with a salad, you know, mix it up with something. This way, there are some poskim who say that when you mix it, now the Ruach Ra is for sure not there anymore, right? There's like an opinion like this. So therefore, Lechachila, the best way to do it is like this. Tov Lechachamir, it's good to be Machmir, to do it this way. But if a person wasn't able to be machmir, let's say he forgot, you know, sometimes forget. By the way, you know, with us, you know, okay, we're, you know, men, you know, so we're more into halakha, but sometimes the women, you know, they're in the kitchen and they're doing things like this all the time, you know, they're making soup and all kinds of things. They're using onions for this, onions for that. So what happens is the half an onion gets left over, you know? <coughs> she doesn't always use the whole onion when she's cooking, you know what I mean? So what is she going to do, throw it away? She doesn't throw it away, right? She wants to keep it, whatever. So uh, she, she puts it there, somewhere in the kitchen, so what's the what's the what's the question? The question is, are you allowed to use it? So the answer is yes, according to these poskim, as we said, right? So the truth is that uh, they point out, by the way, the poskim also something very interesting, you know, which is that if you look in the in the tour, and if you look in the Rambam, if you look in the Shulchan Aruch, all these big, big poskim, right? These were three big poskim that we go like them, you know, we we paskin like them, you know, especially the Sfardim, right? The tour was Ashkenazi, Rambam, and uh, and the Shulchan Aruch were Sfardim. So we cover covering all the sides. They say, you know, what, what do they say about this, by the way, about the Ruach Ra? Nothing. You know why? They don't bring this halakha. You know? So therefore, the poskim say the reason why they didn't bring it is because they also hold that today it doesn't exist. So they agree, they agree with the Tosfot. And also Rabbi, Rabbi Shalman Luria, right? The Marashal. So according to all these poskim, the Rib, the Rambam, the Tur, I'm sorry, the Rambam, the Tur, the Shulchan Aruch, uh, the Marashal, the Tosfot, Hagaut Mordechi, all these posts came hold that, that this Ruach Ra in our times doesn't exist. Also, there are many Achronim in our times, you know, that talk about this. Who, who, who am I talking about? You know, Rav uh, Shevet Halevi. There's also a book, you know, who's the Rav Vazdar, you know, he just passed away about 10 years ago, 5 years ago, no, more than 5 years ago, about 7, 8 years ago, he passed away. He was one of the big posts in, in the Hasidic community, especially. He was Vizhnitzer, you know, if you believe, if that's what he was, you know. But big posek, you know, big, big man, Adam Gadol. So uh, he also writes this in his book, Shemit HaLevi, that today we don't have this Ruach Ra anymore, that they, they, regarding the onions and the garlic. Also, Min Chatitzchak, he also writes this. Who is Min Chatitzchak? This is Rabbi Tzchak Weiss, who was the Abed Din of Eda Haradit, also a big man, Adam Gadot, another big Kosek. He also writes the same thing. So you see from there, right, that pretty much a consensus is this way. And what about for us, right? So the truth is, Mahan also writes this in Hadichot Olam, in his book, Hadichot Olam, Helech Helech Zayn, he writes over there that also, you know, if you left it over, you can, you can use it. There's no problem today. We don't have this Ruach Ra. You know, you can rely on this. And also, Yakut Yosef, he writes also this, same thing. In uh, Yorodea, Yakut Yosef writes that if you left it over, and, you know, you, didn't, you forgot to, whatever, do something with it, uh, cook it, or whatever, to make a salad, whatever, you can use it. This is the thing. So, therefore, there is what to, definitely what to rely on, right? Not only that, but the truth is, the majority of poskim seem to say, right, that there's no problem there. Even though there are some who say that maybe there is, as we said, right, the best way to do it, if you are really a big, uh, you know, tzaddik, if you want to be a big, uh, right, shomer mitzvot, uh, baal nefesh, so what do you do? As we said, right, the best etza is when you finish using the onion or the garlic, whatever, like, put something together with it, you know, mix it with something, and this way, it's guarded better this way. You know, this is the best way to do it. This is like lechat chila mehadrin, you know, like, it's the best. But if you forgot, as we said, no problem. Okay, so that's regarding the issue of the Ruach Ra. By the way, the same thing also applies, I just want to tell you, it's very important to understand this. Same thing also applies to the Ruach Ra that we have with other things. For instance, you know, there's also the issue of Zugot, you know? So what is Zugot? It says in the Talmud that if a person drinks an even number of glasses of wine, even number, what does that mean? Two, four, six, eight, ten, right? Not odd numbers. One, three, seven, nine, eleven. Right? 7 Eleven. So, what happens if you drink Zugot? It's also Ruach Ra over there. And therefore, you can die from that. Shem Rachem. Can you imagine? You know? A person who drinks two cups of wine, says the Gemara, he can die from that. Why? Because he's doing even number, not odd number. Zugot. Couples. Zugot means couples. You understand? 
So says the Tosfot, also this Ruach Ra doesn't exist in our times anymore. So therefore, we're not meant to on this anymore, you know? Did you ever see anybody who died, he drank two glasses of wine and died? You know, we don't have that today. So it's not really something which, which we find. Baruch Hashem, especially we Georgians, you know, we're drinking a lot of wine, you know? So hopefully it doesn't apply to us, this Ruach Ra. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble, chas v'shel. So, so uh, uh, that's, that's what I was saying, right? So today, right, nobody cares about this. Zugot, well, they never even heard about it. If you tell somebody today, Zugot, what are they going to tell you? What's Zugot? Were you making Shidduch, you were Chatham? What, you're a matchmaker? Georgian, what's the book? The, the Georgian help me now. They drink Oriyah, Right, that's the wrong way. Yeah, it's the wrong way according to the Gemara. It's the wrong way. But anyway, today we don't care about that. Take us there, There's also another one which also we're not with that That's what it says in the Shulchan also. There's another Ruach Ra that we don't care about so much today. You know what that is? There's also the issue of Gilui. You know what that means, Gilui? That means you leave, you leave, you leave a drink, you know, open, right? And you leave the room, you leave it there like that. That's called gilui, right? So it says, it says at the Gemara that if you left something open, a drink like this, you know, some wine or some water, overnight, and, right? So even less than that, even less. And you came back in, you know, you shouldn't drink that anymore. Why? Because maybe a nachash came, you know, to drink from there, you know, and he put his eris in there, the poison, you know, the, the venom. You know, so therefore, says the Gemara, don't drink it. Today, the Shulchan Rung says, we don't care about this anymore. You know, again, same thing, right? We don't really care. There are certain things like this. You know, there's also issue of Ruach Ra over there. The rabbi is talking about something else. You're talking about when you put it under the bed overnight. That's a, that's a different issue. But anyway, the point is like this, right? That all these things today, we don't care about them. We don't, we're not going to take on these things, you know? So therefore, the, the truth is, the situation has changed. And by the way, the question is why? I don't want to keep you here too long, you know, so I'll stop in a minute. The question is, why did these things change? You know, one of my friends asked me, like, what, what, what is the world is changing? What, what, what's going on? You know? So the truth is that there aren't many reasons for this. And one of the reasons I can tell you that the world is changing when it comes to Ruach Ra, Tuma, and Tahara, all these kinds of things, is because there's a rule like this, you know, in the Kabbalah, in, in, the, in, the, in the, the, words of, the words of the Chazal. They say that always, you know, in this world, the way it is, that good, there's good and evil, right? There's Yetzirah, Yetzirah Tov, Yetzirah, right? Everybody knows that, right? So... It says, it says, they say the Chazal, that they always have to be equal in this world, you know? What does that mean? The power of the Yetzirah Tov is equal to the power of the Yetzirah. It's always equal. Well, so what does that mean? A person has choice, you know? You want to go this way, you want to go right, or you want to go left, you know? Which way you want to go? The right is the Yetzirah Tov, the left is the Yetzirah. You know? So, which way you want to go? It's your choice. So, HaKadosh Baruch who makes them equal, you know why? Because nobody should say, oh, well, you made this one strong and this one weak, you know, so I didn't go with that one. Okay, I mean, it makes sense. No, I made it equal. You have a free choice. Do what you want. You know what I mean? So, therefore, what happens is that since the Koach of the Kedushah is also coming down, as time goes along, until Mashiach comes, right, then it's going to come back. The Arizal says this, you know, the Arizal says that once the times of Mashiach come, the Kedushah will start coming back. All kinds of things that we didn't have before, like Nebuah, like Ruach HaKodesh, all kinds of things like this will start coming back. All of a sudden, you know, also big chokhmah in Torah that we didn't have before. Chokhmah, the wisdom in Torah, we didn't have. So he says it's going to start coming back. But we, meanwhile, we're going down all the time. We're always, we're always descending, you know what I mean? So what happens is that since the Kedushah is descending, also the Tumah is descending. Oh, so the Ruach Ra is Tumah. Understand? So when the Kedushah goes down, they tell the, the Tumah, excuse me, sir, Mr. Satan over there, you know, come down also, you know, you've got to come down also. You gotta be equal with the Yetzirah Tov. Yetzirah Tov, Yetzirah Tov, Yetzirah Tov. This is the reason why uh, the, the situation with the Tuma and Tara is always changing. It's a, it's a changing world, so it's always uh, right, uh, moving around there. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen, Amen. Rebbe Chanani, Amen, Chachi Omer, Atzak Kadosh Baruch Hu, Zukon Yisrael, Lefi Ha'chir Ba'la Hem Torah Mitzvah, Shonir Ma'am Adonai Chafetz, Le'man, Sitko, Yadil, Torah, V'yadil. Amen. Yeah, I expect that.